Today's topic for discussion is abutment selection in fixed partial denture. What is an abutment? Abutment is a tool or that part of tool or an implant which actually supports to retain a prosthesis. Abutment is the most important part of a fixed partial denture. The total success of fixed partial denture is dependent on abutment selection because these abutments directly take up the occlusal loads and transfer it to the periodontium. Hence, you need to know what are the factors affecting abutment selection. The first factor being para function. What is para function? Any functional, any movements other than functional movements are called para functional movements. They can be classified as clenching, bruxism, or any forces leading from tongue thrusting. These can be again subdivided into severe, moderate, and mild. The second factor affecting abutment selection is masticatory dynamics. Masticatory dynamics is in turn affected by the age, sex, diet, exercise and physical bent of the patient. All these factors in turn lead to difference in the levels of amounts of forces exerted by the patient during biting or any other functional movements. Hence, masticatory dynamics is also very important during abutment selection. The third factor being position of the abutment within the arch. Dental arch has different shapes. So the abutment location is also very important in relation to the hinge or the TMJ, the temporomandibular joint. The farther the abutment from the TMJ or the temporomandibular joint, the force reduces. Hence, the maximum bite force is exerted at the first molar region and as you are going towards anterior part of the jaw, like the central incisors and laterals, the force goes up diminishing. Hence, this way, considering the position within the arch, molar will be the best abutment when compared to the central incisor. Coming to the arch length. So, arch length in the sense it is the span length. The arch length is also very important factor during abutment selection. Coming to arch curvature. There are different curvatures of arches like the U-shape and the V-shape. If you consider anterior edentular space, the span and the anterior posterior spread of the edentulous span is very important during abutment selection. Here you have to consider the liver arm under interabutment axis which axis acts as the rotational axis for the prosthesis. So if you consider the interabutment axis is the axis which passes from the distal most contact of the uh, terminal abutment or the retainer. This is the axis joining both the abutments. And the liver arm is the perpendicular drawn from this axis to the distal most point on the anterior most pontic. Suppose if four incisors are missing in the uh, upper arch, you consider canines as the distal abutments. Uh, these are the first abutments present next to the edentulous area. So the inter abutment axis will be drawn passing contacting the distal surfaces of both the canines and the liver arm is a perpendicular drawn from this interabutment axis to the terminal most or the anterior most point of the anterior most pontic which is the central incisor the labial most point so this is the length of the liver arm in order to have better stability or success in the prosthesis you have to extend or you have to take secondary abutments to the distance equal to the length of this liver arm so most of the cases they actually consider even the first premolars on both the sides as secondary abutments coming to the span length span length in the sense it is the number of teeth missing is it single teeth or the two teeth missing if it is a single teeth missing uh, fixed partial denture the span length will be very less Whereas if it is a two teeth or three teeth missing fixed partial denture, in such case the span, the length of the edentulous span will be more. So here the flexibility or deflection of the fixed partial denture is directly proportional to the cube of the span length. Suppose if it is a single tooth missing case, the span length will be very less. Suppose it is x, the span length, consider the span length as x, the amount of de deflection will be directly proportional to x cube. Whereas in a 2 unit uh, case, the span length will be 2x. So in such case, the amount of deflection will be 2x cube. In the sense, it is 8 times more when compared to the single tooth missing case. And the flexibility is also inversely proportional to the cube of the occlusal gingival thickness of the prontic. Considering the occlusal gingival thickness of the prontic, 
So this, as the span length is increasing, you have to also increase the occl occlusal gingival thickness to reduce the amount of deflection as this occlusal gingival thickness is inversely proportional to the amount of deflection. Coming to the next factor, the crown length. Crown length is also very important in abutment selection. If the abutment is very short, uh, consider the case uh, in lower premolars. The tooth itself will, will be very thin before preparation, very short, the height wise and also the anatomy, the crown form is also not very favorable. The proximal walls are also very small and in cases of anteriors where there is improper development of cingulum, the tooth will be very flat. So the number of surfaces that contacts the retainer will be very less. Hence, crown length and crown form is also very important. Considering the length, the more the length, the amount of bonding area will be increased. Uh, with the uh, retainer surface and hence the better selection of abutment. Coming to crown root ratio, what is crown root ratio? Crown root ratio is the ratio of form between the amount of crown part or the anatomic tooth part above alveolar crest to the amount of tooth below the alveolar crest till the apex of the root. So if you consider a point from the tip of the tooth to the alveolar crest that will be one part the second part is from the alveolar crest to the apex of the root. So the ratio between this crown and root should be 2 is to 3 which is the most ideal ratio and minimal ratio is 1 is to 1 in order to satisfy good abutment selection factors. Coming to periodontal ligament area and the surface area. Antis law was proposed and it, was, it is widely being followed in selection of an abutment. So this law says the total perisemental area of the teeth which are being used as abutment should be equal or should be more than that of the total cement perisemental area of the teeth that are missing. So it is very important to satisfy this Antis law. Coming to root configuration. Root configuration is the shape, size and curvature of the root. Root configuration is a shape size and curvature of the root uh, which is to be considered during abutment selection. Considering anterior teeth, canine will be the best abutment when compared to the central incisor. It is because of the configuration of the root. Canine has the longest root. Also, there is possibility of slight amount of curvature in the canine root. Also, if you consider the uh, transfer section of the root, it is long um, labiolingually than mesodistally. In the sense, it is oval in shape. When you compare this with the central incisor, it is exactly spherical in shape. So the surface area will be less. Hence the perisemental area will also be very less. If you compare this with the posterior tooth, posterior teeth usually have two to three roots. Two to three roots in the sense the amount of perisemental area will be more. The amount of tooth to bone contact will be more leading to more amount of load bearing capacity making them the best abutments. Coming to measly tinted molars, this is the most common occurrence because the first molar being the first tooth to erupt will have to face lots of insults in the tooth and this will be the first tooth to be lost in most of the edentulous cases. Hence, if this case is left unattended, there will be slight mesial drifting of the second molar. In such case where there is slight mesial tilting of the second molar, it can be either uh, managed by using a proximal half crown which is a mesial half crown just covering only the mesial surface of the crown it is a partial veneer crown or it can also be managed by orthodontic teeth movement you can apply the molar using orthodontic anchorages and implants or just slight mesial reduction of the molar where there will be slight nameloplasty <coughs> or it can also be managed using non-rigid connector where a uh, stress breaking mechanism can be incorporated in between the retainer and the pontic. And also the last option can be telescopic crown where first a crown will be cemented onto the mesially tilted molar and then a final FPD will be cemented onto this crown. So this is called a telescopic crown. And the other factor being occlusal anatomy. How is occlusal anatomy important in abutment selection? Occlusal anatomy in the sense the occlusal curvatures, the depressions, grooves and the ridges. 
So the better the curvature stretches and grows, the better the shearing capacity. Hence, the efficiency will be more. In case if there is flat occlusal anatomy, in order to achieve some masticatory efficiency, the number of chewing cycles are to be increased. You need to exert more force to attain sufficient amount of foot grinding. Coming to the next factor, the buccal lingual dimension of the dome. How is it important? You have to exactly duplicate and follow the contour of the arch. In the sense, the crown shouldn't be either over contoured or under contoured. In case of under contoured cases, uh, people might think that as you reduce the buccal lingual width of the teeth, you might think the surface contact will be less and the forces will be less. But in fact, this is not right. It is the other way. <coughs> The amount of forces will be more per unit area. Hence, you have to follow the exact buccolingual dimensions. Never reduce or never give under contour restorations. If it is over contour restorations, in the sense, if you increase the buccolingual uh, width of the crown in order to reduce force per unit area, there will be problem with the maintenance of hygiene and clock control because over contoured crowns lead to encroached embrasures. They encroach the embrasures which are to be naturally followed in order to help maintenance. <coughs> Considering age of the patient. Age of the patient is also very important. If the patient is very young, FPD won't be the best option considering the amount of the level of eruption of the next teeth, the abutment teeth. Just in case the tooth are still in eruption cases, you have to maintain the space with a space maintainer and once the tooth is erupted totally, you have to plan an FPD. The next factor is age of the patient. Age of the patient is also very important in abutment selection. Considering adolescent patient where there is a tooth missing, you can't directly go with a fixed partial denture option. It is because the tooth will be in either erupting stage or the pulp horns will be very high. Just in case the abutments are still erupting, you have to maintain the case with the help of a space maintainer. And once the teeth are totally erupted, you have to go with an interim FPD where there is just temporary crowns, okay? And once the total uh, tooth growth is formed and the pulp horns are slightly lower, then you can go ahead with the final fixed partial denture. <coughs> the next factor is endodontically treated teeth. Just in case the abutment is endodontically not sewn, it is must and mandatory that you directly go ahead with the endodontic treatments uh, which are required and then you have to use a tooth as abutment. Teeth which are indirectly pulp treated are not ideal for uh, being an abutment because due to a more amount of loads this tooth might give up in the near future and the total prosthodontic treatment might go waste. Just in case if there is any such case you have to directly go ahead with the pulpal treatment procedures. Coming to the pyre abutment. Pyre abutment case is the case in which there is a lone standing abutment in between two edentulous spaces. Abutment which is bounded on either side by edentulous spaces. So in such case, you have to use secondary abutments which are on the other side of the abutment, uh, other side of the edentulous spaces. In such cases, the length of the span and also the length of the FPD increases. This might lead to more amount of flexure. So in such cases, you have to either go with a non-rigid connector where there, uh, a key and keyway mechanism will be used. Key will be located in the central the lone standing pontic and the keyway will be located in the distal most abutment. In such case, as there are loads, this uh, non-rigid connector helps in stress breaking mechanism. There won't be direct loads transferred to the central lone standing abutment. This is very important in case of a fire abutment case. It is because of the differential movement of the teeth. As there is difference in the arch curvature, different teeth move in different angles and with different amount of movements. So if you consider anterior teeth, the amount of buccolingual movement during function will be uh, ranges, it ranges between 50 microns and as you go to the posterior, the amount of movement will be more. It might go up to 1 or 8 microns. Due to this differential movement and difference of intrusion, there will be some amount of micro leakage possible in the terminal abutments. Hence, in order to prevent all this due to the complexity of forces in case of a fire abutment, it is must ensure that you have to go with a non-rigid connector.
coming to the abutment selection for cantilever FPD. First, what is a cantilever FPD? Cantilever FPD is that one where there is abutment only on one side of the fixed partial denture. In the, in the sense, only one abutment will be supporting the pontic. There is no secondary abutment on the other side of the pontic. So, the pontic is unsupported on the other side. It is supported only on one side by a single abutment. So, this cantilever case is ideal if you have to replace a maxillary lateral incisor with the help of a canal. Be it a maxillary or mandibular, in case if you have to replace a lateral incisor, you need not prepare the central incisor as in case of a conventional FPD. You can directly use a single canine because canine is the most ideal tool to go with a cantilever FPD because of its location in the arch also the amount of bone support it has uh, due to the length of the root and the thickness of the bone surrounding the root. In case if you have to replace a first premolar, canine is not the ideal one. In such case you have to make your second premolar and the first molar as your abutments. So give a splinted crowns to the second premolar and the first molar and the first premolar can be cantilevered. So in cantilever cases, occlusion and the amount of tooth movement should be considered. These are the most factors guiding your abutment selection in cantilever cases. So considering the canine and lateral incisor cantilever case, you have to keep the lateral incisor totally out of occlusion both in centric and eccentric relations. And in order to give additional support and avoid any rotational forces, you can actually give a mesial resting arm on the central incisor, the distal surface of the central incisor or you can extend this crown, the lateral incisor crown slightly onto the, uh, the lingual surface of the central incisor so that this helps in anti-rotation. So you can that way even avoid the rotational forces. In case of a first premolar cantilever case, you have to uh, compulsory have an occlusion contact. In such case, you have to make the contact on the distal fossa of the first uh, premolar. In case you have to uh, give a cantilever second molar, just in case if a second molar is missing, you have to restore the tooth in order to prevent the opposing second molar from supra eruption. In such case, you can directly use a single first molar as your uh, abutment and the second premolar should be of a size equal to a premolar. It shouldn't have the total contour and a buccolingual width. It is your main idea of replacing this tooth is to just prevent your opposing tooth from supra eruption. In such case, it is ideal that you make the crown very small in the size of a premolar. The larger the crown, there will be more forces. So, single first molar can't take up the loads of the second molar. So, now that you have seen the factors affecting abutment selection, so you have to follow all these factors while you select a case for fixed partial denture. Considering all these factors and the amount of action of each factor on the abutment, you have to go with the abutment selection.